It powered some of the most iconic wide-body jets in history. But on one summer day in 1989, the GECF-6 engine turned into a ticking time bomb at 37,000 feet. The shocking failure of this engine didn't just bring down a plane, it changed aviation safety forever. This is the story of the explosive truth behind the GECF-6 engine, the crash of United Flight 232, and the terrifying lessons we had to learn the hard way. We're about to uncover a story that shook the aviation industry to its core. A story of engineering excellence that concealed a deadly flaw, of human heroism in the face of the impossible, and of how one catastrophic failure transformed flight safety forever. This isn't just about metal and mechanics. It's about the fragile line between triumph and tragedy at 37,000 feet. Part 1 the powerhouse behind the skies. Before disaster struck, the GECF-6 was considered an engineering marvel. When General Electric unveiled this turbofan engine in the early 1970s, we witnessed what seemed like the perfect marriage of power and efficiency. This wasn't just another engine. It was the beating heart of aviation's golden age. The CF-6 family powered the giants of the sky, the McDonnell Douglas DC-10, the Airbus A300, and even variants of the Boeing 747. Airlines around the world embraced this powerhouse, trusting it to carry millions of passengers across continents and oceans. We're talking about an engine that had logged over 400 million flight hours by 1989, a testament to its reliability and widespread adoption. What made the CF-6 so special? Its high-bypass turbofan design delivered impressive fuel efficiency while generating the massive thrust needed to lift wide-body aircraft. The engine's fan disc, a critical rotating component at the front, spun at thousands of revolutions per minute, drawing air into the engine with incredible force. This titanium alloy disc was engineered to withstand enormous stresses, designed to last the entire operational life of the engine. But as we would soon discover, perfection in engineering is an illusion. Hidden deep within the metallurgy of these seemingly indestructible components was a flaw so subtle, so microscopic, that it evaded detection for years. The CF-6 wasn't just powering aircraft, it was carrying a secret that would eventually explode into one of aviation's most shocking revelations. The stage was set. Airlines trusted it. Passengers flew on it daily. Engineers celebrated it. But hiding deep within the engine was a flaw nobody saw coming. A defect that would turn routine flight into a fight for survival. Part 2. The Hidden Time Bomb The fan disc was supposed to last a lifetime, but it didn't. To understand what went wrong, we need to examine the heart of this catastrophic failure. A piece of titanium alloy that seemed perfect but harbored a deadly secret. Picture the CF-6's fan disc, a massive, precisely machined wheel of titanium alloy designed to spin at incredible speeds while maintaining perfect balance. This component is forged under extreme heat and pressure, creating what should be a homogeneous, floor-free structure. The titanium alloy used in these discs was chosen for its exceptional strength-to-weight ratio and fatigue resistance, properties that made it ideal for withstanding the punishing stresses of jet engine operation. But metallurgy, like all sciences, has its dark corners. During the forging process of the fan disc that would eventually destroy United Flight 232, something went terribly wrong. A microscopic impurity, what metallurgists call a hard alpha inclusion, became embedded in the titanium. This wasn't a manufacturing error anyone could see or easily detect. It was a metallurgical anomaly, a tiny region where the titanium's crystal structure differed from the surrounding material. We now know this inclusion was only about the size of a grain of sand, invisible to the naked eye and undetectable by the inspection methods available at the time. The disc passed every quality control test, every inspection, 
every certification requirement. On paper, it was perfect. In reality, it was a time bomb. As the engine accumulated flight hours, this tiny flaw began to work its deadly magic. Each takeoff, each landing, each cycle of heating and cooling created microscopic stress concentrations around the inclusion. Like bending a paperclip back and forth until it breaks, the titanium around this defect slowly began to crack. The fracture started small, perhaps just a few thousandths of an inch, but with each flight cycle, it grew. The crack propagated through the disk's structure, following the path of least resistance through the titanium matrix. For years, this process continued silently, invisibly, as the disk spun faithfully in service. What makes this failure particularly insidious is that it wasn't sudden, it was progressive. The crack grew for an estimated 15,000 to 20,000 flight cycles before reaching critical size. During routine inspections, nothing appeared wrong. The engine performed normally, showing no signs of the disaster brewing within its core. By July 1989, the crack had grown to about 1.5 inches long, still invisible during external inspections, but now approaching the point of no return. The remaining ligament of sound titanium was shrinking with each flight, bearing an ever-increasing load as the effective cross-section of the disc decreased. It wasn't a matter of if the disc would fail, but when. The laws of physics had already sealed the fate of that fan disc, and unfortunately, the passengers and crew of United Flight 232 would be the ones to discover this terrible truth. Part 3. The Day Everything Went Wrong On July 19, 1989, a fully loaded DC-10 left Denver, completely unaware of what lay ahead. United Airlines Flight 232, a regularly scheduled passenger flight from Denver to Chicago, carried 296 souls who had no idea they were about to become part of aviation history. The flight began like thousands of others. Captain Alfred Haynes, a veteran pilot with over 30,000 flight hours, commanded the aircraft alongside First Officer William Records and Flight Engineer Dudley Dvorak. The DC-10 climbed smoothly into the afternoon sky, reaching its cruising altitude of 37,000 feet as passengers settled in for what should have been a routine two-hour flight. At 3.16 p.m., everything changed in an instant. The number two engine, the CF-6 mounted in the tail, suddenly exploded with tremendous violence. But this wasn't just an engine failure, it was a complete catastrophic disintegration. The fan disk, weakened by years of crack growth, finally reached its breaking point. Centrifugal forces tore the disk apart, sending massive chunks of titanium alloy flying at supersonic speeds. The explosion was so violent that passengers described it as feeling like the aircraft had been hit by lightning and struck by a sledgehammer simultaneously but the real catastrophe was just beginning. The flying debris from the disintegrating fan disk acted like shrapnel from a massive bomb, and the tail section of the DC-10 became the target. In a cruel twist of engineering fate, all three of the DC-10's hydraulic systems ran through the tail section, clustered together for structural efficiency. The exploding engine sent metal fragments slicing through these vital systems like a sword through silk. Within seconds, all hydraulic power was lost, a failure so unlikely that it had never been seriously considered in the aircraft's design. Without hydraulic power, the pilots lost control of virtually everything. The primary flight controls, the landing gear, even the ability to steer the aircraft. The DC-10 began to pitch and roll unpredictably, becoming what Captain Haynes would later describe as a very large, very expensive glider with a mind of its own. But this crew refused to give up. In an extraordinary display of airmanship and crew resource management, they began experimenting with differential thrust from the remaining two engines to control the aircraft. By adding power to one engine and reducing it on the other, 
they discovered they could influence the aircraft's direction barely. Training instructor Dennis Fitch, who happened to be deadheading on the flight, joined the cockpit crew to assist with the emergency. Together, they performed what many consider impossible. They managed to guide the crippled aircraft towards Sioux City Airport, Iowa, for an emergency landing attempt. The approach was a nightmare of barely controlled flight. The aircraft pitched up and down violently, rolled from side to side, and descended much faster than normal. At 4 p.m., exactly 44 minutes after the explosion, Flight 232 struck the runway at Sioux City. The impact was devastating. The aircraft broke apart and caught fire, creating a scene that defied survival. Yet, incredibly, 185 of the 296 people aboard walked away from that wreckage. Later flight simulator studies would reveal that most professional pilot crews, given the same circumstances, could not duplicate this outcome. What happened that day at Sioux City was nothing short of miraculous. 111 people lost their lives, including one flight attendant who died helping passengers evacuate. Their sacrifice and the survival of 185 others would not be in vain. This tragedy would reshape aviation safety forever. Part 4. What the Explosion Exposed It wasn't just an engine failure. It was a wake-up call that reverberated through every corner of the aviation industry. The investigation into United Flight 232 uncovered systemic flaws that went far beyond a single defective engine disc. The National Transportation Safety Board's investigation revealed the shocking truth about the fan disc failure. Using electron microscopy and advanced metallurgical analysis, investigators traced the crack's growth over years of service. They discovered the hard alpha inclusion that started it all, that grain of sand-sized defect that had escaped detection through multiple inspection cycles. But the investigation exposed something even more troubling the inadequacy of inspection methods used at the time. The fluorescent penetrant inspection and magnetic particle inspection techniques employed by General Electric could only detect surface cracks, or those very close to the surface. The subsurface crack that ultimately destroyed Flight 232 remained invisible to these methods right up until the catastrophic failure. General Electric faced intense scrutiny over their quality control processes. The investigation revealed that while GE had followed all required inspection protocols, these protocols were insufficient to detect the type of flaw that caused this failure. The company was forced to acknowledge that thousands of CF6 engines in service worldwide potentially carried similar defects. The aircraft design itself came under equally harsh examination. The DC-10's hydraulic system architecture, which had seemed logical and efficient, was revealed as a critical vulnerability. By routing all three hydraulic systems through the same area of the aircraft, designers had created a single point of failure that could render the aircraft uncontrollable. This was a fundamental design philosophy error that extended beyond just the DC-10. The Federal Aviation Administration and international aviation authorities responded with unprecedented urgency. New airworthiness directives mandated enhanced inspection procedures for CF-6 fan discs, including the implementation of more sophisticated non-destructive testing methods. Ultrasonic inspection techniques capable of detecting subsurface flaws became mandatory for these critical components. More broadly, the aviation industry began rethinking the entire approach to critical system redundancy. The principle that no single failure should result in loss of aircraft control was strengthened and expanded. New aircraft designs were required to demonstrate that even multiple failures in the same system could not compromise flight safety. General Electric, while maintaining that they had followed all applicable standards at the time, implemented comprehensive changes to their manufacturing and inspection processes. 
The company developed new ultrasonic inspection techniques, specifically designed to detect the type of subsurface flaws that caused Flight 232. They also revised their metallurgical processes to minimize the formation of hard alpha inclusions during titanium forging. The CF-6 engine family continued in service, but under dramatically enhanced surveillance. Every fan disc was subjected to more rigorous inspection schedules, and new manufacturing standards were implemented to prevent similar defects. The engine that had once been a symbol of reliability became a case study in the continuous evolution of safety standards. This wasn't just about fixing one engine type, it was about fundamentally changing how we think about safety in aviation. The industry learned that meeting existing standards isn't enough when those standards themselves are inadequate. Flight 232 taught us that safety is not a destination, but a journey of continuous improvement. Part 5. Legacy of Flight 232 and the GECF-6 Out of tragedy came transformation. Flight 232 didn't just crash, it changed everything. Captain Haynes and his crew became aviation legends, showing the world what teamwork under pressure really means. Their actions became the gold standard for crew resource management training that every pilot learns today. When instructor Dennis Fitch stepped into that cockpit to help, he demonstrated that in a crisis, every person matters. The CF-6 engine survived this disaster and continued flying, even powering Air Force One but it flew under completely new rules. Every fan disc now gets ultrasonic inspection that can see defects the size of a grain of sand. The inspection techniques developed after Flight 232 became the standard for all jet engines worldwide. Aircraft design changed forever too. No more clustering critical systems in one place. Modern planes separate their backup systems so that one explosion can't destroy everything. The hydraulic nightmare that nearly doomed Flight 232 simply can't happen on newer aircraft. Most importantly, we learned that impossible failures aren't actually impossible. Flight 232 proved that even the most unlikely scenarios need to be planned for. Today's pilots train for situations that were once considered too remote to worry about. The CF-6 taught us that safety isn't about perfection. It's about learning from failure and building better systems. Every flight today is safer because of what we discovered in that Iowa cornfield. We often marvel at the power of jet engines, but it only takes a microscopic flaw to bring everything crashing down. The GECF-6 engine didn't just fail, it exploded and nearly cost 296 lives. But in the midst of disaster, pilots became legends, investigators became reformers, and aviation became safer. Flight 232 taught us that safety isn't about preventing all failures, it's about surviving them. That tiny crack in titanium became one of aviation's greatest teachers. Today, every passenger who flies is protected by the lessons learned from that terrible day in 1989. The CF-6 still powers aircraft around the world, but it does so with the wisdom earned through tragedy. Every inspection, every safety protocol, every pilot's training carries forward the memory of those we lost and the heroism of those who refused to give up. This is the power of truth, of learning from tragedy and remembering the lives forever changed by one tiny crack in titanium.